Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Illiterati by Gap Closer Games, the creators of Rival Restaurants. This is a one to five player game that takes roughly about 30 minutes to play and is for ages seven and up. And in the game Illiterati, you are playing as one of many people attempting to solve your book. You're gonna have different books and different requirements and you're going to be working together cooperatively with the other players around the table to solve your book and then help them solve their book's requirements. Maybe you might need shapes and math terms or maybe you're gonna need something like weapons and military um, items and you're going to be trying to help them create a number of words equal to a number of letters uh, and have the right symbols on them to complete the book. You'll go from one book to the next book and then you're going to select another book and you'll do the final chapter. And if you can all complete the final chapter together after completing your individual books, then you're going to win the game. However, round to round, you're going to have the illiterati bad guys popping out, doing things to mess with the words that you have in front of you, as well as your letters. And if you ever fill up this burn tracker here to the last space, meaning you have too many letters that you're not utilizing, then you're going to lose the game. Be careful and beware. Let's play illiterati. To begin the game in every way except for the single player variant, you are going to be taking three different decks of cards and shuffling them. The Illiterati Agent deck, the uh, Red Book deck, and the Blue Book deck. There are also going to be two extra cards in the deck, so you can set aside. These are to choose your own or make your own if you'd like, and go ahead and set those aside for now. Each player is going to be getting a round order marker, and they're also going to be getting one book. And the book they're going to start with is the Red Book. Go ahead and take one of these, place it face up in front of each player. They should each be different. Each player is also going to start with a number of letter tiles. You're going to go ahead and choose one of the bags and put all the letter tiles in it and then deal out five letter tiles to each player playing the game. Additionally, you're going to have a number of letters in the middle of the game board that's kind of in the reserve pool. Go ahead and select three of them from the bag and place them there. You'll have different difficulty levels, but for now we're just going to go ahead and do the normal round, which is going to involve a certain number of letters and a library limit, um, number of books per player, etc, etc. I'll get into that more in my review. But regardless, if you've given every single player a book, a round order tracker, five of these letters, three in the middle, shuffled all three decks, and placed out the burn tracker, then the last thing you're going to need is this little guy here, your, your little timepiece. You'll be flipping over to start rounds off. And that's pretty much all you need to begin the game. Playing the game is quite simple, and there are only three phases to play. First is the word building phase, the book binding phase, and finally the illiterati attack phase. In the word building phase, players are going to get a number of letters, and in this case, it's going to be seven. You're going to take an extra seven letters for each of the players and place them out. Once each player has gotten their seven letters, you're instantly going to go ahead and start the timer. You can wait for everybody to flip them over, um, or you can start them as soon as everyone gets it. And once you have done that, then players are going to start going to bid build words. They're going to look at all their letters that they have, along with any letters people do not need on the table, and any letters in the library. The library is like the little area for overflow. And you're going to create any words that you want. But the most important thing is that you try and complete your book. In this case here, I have shapes and math terms. So I could do something like multiplication, addition, subtraction. I could do something like... I don't, I don't know, uh, some type of trapezoid or whatever. Uh, and anything that involves math, anything that involves a shape, a pentagon, a hexagon, octagon. And I want to create words like those. Not only that, but I also am going to need three purple symbols. And the way you get them is by looking at your letters. Purple is indicative of these swords. Uh, so you're going to need up to uh, three of these in any of the words that you make. And you're going to need eight letters or more. It can be in multiple words, so I can have a five letter word and a three letter word. It doesn't really matter, it's up to you. Oh, you can have one big eight letter word. Regardless though, you're also going to want to build words that do not involve the category because you do not want to have any leftover letters at the end of the round because that's going to cost you a burn. So you're going to be trying to build things and you can ch choose to steal words from other players or letters. Algebra, A L. I'll, I need a G, E, B, R, 
hey, algebra. And then I also realized I need purple, right? So I'm gonna need to switch things around. Okay, I'll trade you this A here and I'll take this one here. Now I have two of the symbols that I need. Uh, and I have all these extra ones left over, but maybe I need to go ahead and add pose. And now I have one extra left over and I give it to him and he was gonna, he's gonna try and make a word as well. And you can use these ones as well, like a rack here. Now the problem is once this timer runs out, so I've got my words uh, and, and they've got theirs. If there's any left over, one of them is going to go into the burn tracker. And this will happen every single time you have an overflow of more than three letters in your area here. Additionally, you're gonna go and check the book binding portion of it. So you'll go, okay, can I bind my book? Well, I need uh, eight or more letters of shapes and math terms. Well, I have pose and algebra, this is not a uh, math term or a shape. So I only have this one, but I'm, I'm missing a symbol, which means that I have to leave everything on the table. And you're always gonna leave all letters that are not turned in and all words that are not turned in on the table in front of you. And they can always be rearranged. Then what's gonna happen after that is the illiterati are going to attack. You're gonna draw one of these cards here and flip it over and do the ability. Each round that you do this phase, so if we do next phase and we flip over another one of these guys, you'll check to see if it's the same art. And if it is, you'll put it on top and then you'll do both abilities. However, if it is a different piece of art or a different character in the Aelodari, you're just going to do that guy's ability. So there are ways where you're going to be stacking additional abilities or you'll be doing separate ones based on what comes out. But in this phase, just once around, you're going to be taking one of these guys here and you are going to do whatever it says. And usually, always, there's gonna be bad things. Anyone who does not have uh, two or more swords and two or more orange uh, letters must discard three. Well, I have one, two, three is my wild, and one, two, three purple. So I'm actually okay. Uh, but this other player over here, he does not have uh, the needed symbols. So he's gonna have to discard three letters. And whenever you discard letters from one bag, you'll put it into another bag. And then after that, you're gonna go ahead and rinse and repeat. And you'll keep going until you're able to bind your book. When you bind your book, you'll get a new book. And you'll just put it over that. And now I have 10 letters or more, equal numbers of vowels and consonants. And this player here would have to do the same thing. It might take this player longer or more rounds to do it, but anyway, they'll flip over and get a new one when they finish their book. And now they'll need to use seven unique letters. And we'll keep playing round to round to round. More literatis are coming out. More of these are gonna be brought out. Uh, up until finally everyone completes all these. They bind their books. Whenever you bind them, you'll turn them face down. And then we'll choose either the blue or red book uh, secretly, because you can't look at them and see which one, unfortunately. So I'll just pick one and we'll do the final chapter. 12 or more letters of words, use five or more of the same symbol, body parts. And everyone has to complete this. So you'll put this somewhere in the middle so everyone knows, and now you'll need to complete it. If you have any extra words you've left over that actually do relate to this, that will count towards it. But once you've turned in, you're done. However, you can keep playing and you'll keep getting letters to try and help other people. And of course, because there might be overflow, you'll have to deal with as well. But you're all working together to complete both of your books and then everyone has to get that last final uh, chapter done individually while helping other players use these tiles. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. If you fill in the burn book, uh, the burn tracker, before everyone finishes the final chapter, then you lose. However, if you're able to finish your first, second book, and third final chapter for everyone, then you win the game. And of course, there's lots of variants, but that's basically how the game is played. So Illiterati is a word building game. It's a survival game and it's a cooperative game. And I actually like all of those except for the word building part because I'm not very good at word building. However, that did not mind, I did not mind this in the slightest this game because now I'm not working against the prowess of my opponents. They are working with me to help me know, is this a word? Is that a word? Um, and, and normally speaking, that drives me insane, but with other people, now I have the ability to go like, okay, so you know, oh, that makes sense. Okay, oh, I didn't spell that right, okay. And you can kind of cooperatively determine what words you need for what you need to uh, complete. And you're gonna get these different types of objectives that you're gonna be working towards. What I also like about this 
this game too is it comes with unique types of tiles. You're going to be either getting a regular letter that is going to have a symbol on it. So this is a uh, Varane Cloud E, which is a green. Or maybe it's going to be a B with no symbol. Or it's going to be an A with this little like circular orb, um, which is yellow. Uh, you can also get uh, this. This is a Z, which is a nasty tile, but it gives you one of any symbol. Or this one here is a wild that gives you any symbol as well. So this could be any letter as well as any symbol, which is awesome in the game. And so you have lots of ways to try and work out to make words. And as you continue, more letters come out and it gets more challenging because you have to keep changing the words around and finding the words people need and making sure that you use any lost letters, letters that are no longer attached. Like, oh, I had algebra and now I've got these random letters here and I have to come up with something else. B R A um, Bran. I guess Bran would work. R A Rab Rabies without the uh, Z instead of an S. Yeah, you need to try and figure that out. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the timer gives you a good amount of time as well. Now, you are getting a lot of letters in the game, but that doesn't really. Like, that's part of the fun of it, is like scrambling and figuring out what letters you need to put in the library uh, that you can save for later, as well as making additional words that you can use later as well. You'll have to decide like what types of words come, what types of words go. And so the word building phase is an amazing aspect to the game. And being able to make words that do not match with your category is nice. I can just kind of group things together to save for later. And I only care about not having this library fill up at the end of when this timer runs out. Okay the timer ran out. Did I complete it? No, that's okay. We can actually just keep going. Um, and for anybody who did, they can flip it over. Now their objective is a new book and they're going to be working on a new one, which is great. Um, and once uh, they finish this, they can keep moving on. And so uh, basically, or they can't keep moving on, sorry. Once they finish this, then they can help everybody else finish their books. And once everybody has finished these guys, then we go on to the final chapter. And so you're constantly working for yourself making sure other people are getting what they need done and the symbols that they need and switching out letters from just the main words you've already made to make sure everybody has the symbols they require. Um, saving these, maybe these special wilds for people who need them more, having a trouble time finding letters or words or just not great at spelling. And so you can kind of help them out while you're able to make these complicated, crazy words. And so it, it's just, it, it, it's so good. Uh, the book binding phase is pretty self-explanatory. It's just flipping these guys over when you complete them. And you have your own set, your own pace. And once you've completed your pace, you work with your opponents. And then we have the attack phase. Now this phase is actually really cool. So what happens is these, these guys come out and then you have to read them and do what they say. Okay, if you don't have this or this, you have to sacrifice these words or these letters. And that's how it always turns out. You can either uh, discard two words or each player can discard two letters from every word they have. Uh, and so you can actually get away with, if you're smart, removing letters you don't want. So I've made my word, I don't know, the, rabbi and easy, but this is not, they're not words, but uh, this, is, this is what I have, these are my words. And we go, okay, I now can get rid of uh, two letters from every word. Well, I don't want these guys, and I can get rid of the more complicated ones, and I can discard them, and so it's gonna be easier for me later to make words. And you don't suffer from the attack as far as like the burn tracker. You're just gonna be uh, having to continually make words, and t uh, letters are gonna continually be removed from the board. As the game progresses, you take too long, more and more of these guys come out and they start stacking their powers together and they start getting more and more and more difficult to the point where it's almost impossible. You have to make sure you're kind of limited in time as well as the amount of these tiles that pop out, the scope starts getting crazier, and you could even increase the difficulty if you want here. You can start with a library of three or two or one. So in this case, the regular library is three, but you can make it two if you want more difficult and one. And finally, you can make it very difficult if you want and just have none, I guess. Um, I think legendary is already one, but if you want to, you could do that. Um, there is also the amount of burn letters you can have. So you'll be increasing this if you want to play it more challenging. So you can go, okay, I can only miss one before we lose. Um, how many books we get per player? So normally it's just one of each of these books here. Well, if you want, you can make it four of these guys here. And so it starts getting even more crazy. And so yeah, there's a ton of different ways you can kind of uh, vary the game to make it even more challenging. But I liked it at the normal mode. It's kind of where I'm good at my pace. 
The backside of here tells you the letter counts and what type of letters are in the game. This is very useful as well. You'll know what you need and what available tiles there are going to be. And of course, when this runs out, and actually it will run out, it's gonna go in here. Every time you gain a word from one of your books, every time one of these illiterati bad guys comes out and you have to discard letters, you're gonna be putting these guys into here. So this is like the discard pile. But when this gets full, now you have a discard pile and you have a new bag of tiles that you can draw from and you just keep going from there. The game is quick, the rounds are fast, the artwork is phenomenal. The quality of the game, phenomenal. The tiles, these letter tiles, phenomenal. Even even this is is nice, the little count, the little hourglass. It's got a little extra niceness to it. It's just really, really nice. Everything feels good. I if this game didn't have these tiles, I probably would not like it as much, but it feels good to move the words around and having quality tiles to do that is great. There's not a whole lot I don't like about this game. There's a lot of little intricacies that you'll find as you play and figure out as you go along and ways to help your uh, allies that you wouldn't manage to think that you knew how to do. And, and it just kind of adds to not only the learning process, build the word building aspect, the fun cooperative nature of the game. It's a way for people who don't aren't very exceptional at spelling like myself to be able to work with other players and find the words that are needed in the time that is allotted. And it's still going to be a challenge and you can always even make it more challenging. But yes, Illiterati, um, I've played both of their games and this is by far my favorite of theirs. This is actually, if it was made this year, it's probably gonna be in my top five right now. And that's saying a lot for a word building game because I suck at these, but yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Illiterati by Gap Closer Games. If you're interested in picking this up, there will be a link down below in the description. Look, it's even a book and it pops out. Oh, the quality is so great. Uh, I actually, honestly, I even tried to think of like a, like something I wouldn't like about this game because normally I'm just like, oh, it's a word building game. If you like word building games, you won't like this one. But if I liked it and I don't like word building games all that often, then I feel like I shouldn't say that because in, in general, it's really, really good the way it is made. Uh, unfiltergame.com, blog posts, giveaways, all that kind of stuff. You can, if you see more than one of our videos, you can go ahead and hit that like slash uh, subscribe button with the bell notification button. It really does greatly help us out. And like I said, if, if we've earned your sub and you've been here more than once, then I would appreciate it. You can also go ahead and join our live streams. It's on Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We stream it here on YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitch, all those places. And if you'd like, we have a Wednesday live stream on whatnot, where we sell games, auction off games, all that kind of stuff. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to world word building with you next time, because I really enjoyed that. That was, that was great.